Hello, and welcome to the Tabletop Bellhop Express check-in. Today, I'm recapping Tabletop Bellhop Live, episode 28, The Hook, Games for Catching New Gamers. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your game and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. <coughs> tabletop Gaming Weekly, where we look back at the games that hit our tabletops in the last week. Last Saturday, I hosted a game night at my house, specifically focused on getting some of my unplayed games played, as part of the Less Shame, More Game Challenge. The first game we played is actually the game that has been on my piles of shame the absolute longest, a game I first purchased in 2015. That game is Shafausa. Now, the main reason it took me so long to get to Shafausa is due to translation issues with the rules, especially the family rules, which are meant to introduce you to the game. I was determined to figure this game out this time around and found that the full geek rules actually made more sense than the intro rules. Besides the badly translated rules, the other thing that really sticks out about Shafausa is that it's a bit of a bait and switch. The art and fluff included with the game make you expect a 4X or folk on a map fantasy D&D style adventure. But in reality, it's a relatively heavy economic game. Now, I ended up writing up a full, rather detailed review of Shafosa, and I encourage you to check that out over at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on Reviews and scroll down a bit to find it. Now, the other thing I got off my pile of shame this past weekend is the Scoville Labs expansion for Scoville. This is an excellent small box expansion with two parts. First off, you get new market cards, new chili recipes, and a ton of more peppers. All of these are welcome additions that I plan to use every time I play Scoville going forward. Now the other half of the expansion is the lab. This includes a new player board for every player, which is a 3x3 grid in which players can plant additional peppers. Now when planting these peppers, they of course crossbreed. These peppers also count when calculating the market price of peppers. Now I admit I like the lab, but one of the other players I played with found it just muddied the game and wasn't a fan. So while I expect to use the other parts of Scoville Labs every time, I'm only going to include the lab part of the expansion when I get buy-in from the other players. Now for Sean, my podcast co-host, it was a week of snow days and PA days and lots and lots of Harry Potter Hogwarts battle with his kids. He finally managed to finish off book five, congrats, and found the next two books rather easy to beat. So that's six and seven as well. He noted they may be almost too easy. So from there, he moved on to the monstrous Book of Monsters expansion. Now, his family has tried multiple times so far and not even come close to winning. So while the main game, main game may end off easy, the expansion really seems to ramp up the difficulty. Friday's Gloomhaven live stream was a first for us. We were short one player and had to figure out what to do about this. I took a look back through the rule book at the different ways of play and we're looking for possible options. Now these included playing without the one player and just continuing the campaign, starting a new party, playing an existing mission in casual mode, or trying a random dungeon. After some talk, we decided to go with the random dungeon. Now to hear more about these potential options and why we decided to go with the random dungeon, check out the full podcast, which will go live Tuesday at 2 a.m. Eastern. Now, the random dungeon rules in Gloomhaven are rather solid. You play through a randomly generated three-room dungeon with the goal of defeating all the monsters within the rooms. Now, monsters and rooms are generated through card decks, which makes for a rather large number of possibilities and a really interesting mix of monsters, hazards, traps, obstacles, and treasure. I have to say I really enjoyed this format for playing Gloomhaven. Enough that I think it's going to be our preferred method of play for any future sessions where we're short a player. Now remember to join us Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash tabletop bellhop, where we stream our Gloomhaven games live. I've got one quick announcement this week. Now that we've increased the amount of content we're putting out, it can be hard to keep up with everything we released. I know even I forget about stuff that's come out during weekdays, especially stuff that's been pre-scheduled. To help with that, we've got a newsletter. Sign up to receive a weekly email in your inbox that recaps all of the content we put out in the week previous. You can subscribe to this newsletter at newsletter.tabletopbellhop.com. This year, I made a couple different gaming-based New Year's resolutions. 
The first of which is the Less Shame More Game Challenge, which I mentioned earlier, a quest to get my unplayed board games played. Now another similar challenge I'm taking part in is the RPG A Month Challenge. Now the challenge in this one is to at least read one RPG item a month, with the overall goal being to get some use out of those games and game books that have been sitting on your shelves or your hard drives for far too long just gathering dust. Now the RPG item I chose to read for RPG a month in January is the Shadowrun Beginner Box from Catalyst Game Labs. I personally have never actually played Shadowrun, a game that has been out since the 1980s, and this was my chance to check out that setting. Now I have to say I was a bit disappointed by this box set. Well, it looks great with high quality paper, full color, evocative art, good layout, and plenty of examples. I just found it to be lacking as an intro box. I felt more like a Shadowrun box created for Shadowrun fans. People coming new to the 5th edition of a game, either from 4th edition or old fans returning to Shadowrun after some time away. Now that said, if the goal of the box was to get me to want to play and learn more about Shadowrun, it did work for me. I think it's a great box for people hoping to get back into Shadowrun. I think it's a decent box for experienced RPG fans like myself who are curious about Shadowrun, but I think it's a terrible box for someone looking for their first RPG experience. Now check out the full review on the blog, tabletopbellhop.com, for a way more nuanced look at this particular box set, including all of the contents. Ask the Bellhop. We're here to answer your Gaming and Game Night questions. This week, we're looking at games to hook new gamers. Kat asked, What game would you introduce to people who aren't used to playing games? What's the one game that you have introduced to hook people? Well, one game only, eh? Well, that's easy. It's got to be Azul. Azul has so much going for it. Eye-catching, tactile, pieces that beg to be touched. Player boards that are well laid out and don't look overly complicated. Rulebook isn't thick and it has lots of examples. Actual rules are straightforward and easy to learn, and the game time is in that sweet 20 to 40 minute spot. Now the thing is, well, I dig Azul a lot. I talk about it a lot on the show, on the podcast, on the blog. It's not the game I'm going to pick every time to introduce to a new gamer. I don't use just one game to do that. When I'm trying to entice people, I look at a lot of different types of games. I don't actually think there is one game perfect for hooking someone. There is no one true bait. So let's take a look at some things I think about when picking a game to introduce a prospective new gamer. Number one, biggest one, is it's got to be easy to learn. One of the biggest hurdles that our hobby faces is that people outside the hobby think hobby board games are complicated. They expect them to be hard to learn, and they're going to have to memorize a bunch of terms and rules and mechanics. You can dispel this illusion by presenting something that's very easy to learn. You want games with simple mechanics and very few interactions between those mechanics. And you want games that can be taught in minutes, not tens of minutes. Now you also want to try to pick games that are exciting and have lots of action and interaction between the players. You want something that's going to catch people's attention where players are engaged for the full game. Now this includes both the actual gameplay and the physicality of the game. Eye candy really does make a difference. Now, theme can be huge. If your prospective new gamer is into some brand or franchise, then half your work is done for you if you can find a game with that theme. Like, say this new player is obsessed with Harry Potter, then a game like Hogwarts Battle is going to have a way better chance of hooking that player than some abstract tile placement game like Azul. Now, a note on part of your filler games. I am not a fan on using those to hook people. I like to really get someone to dig into a game, and for that, the game has to have impact. You want the player thinking about the game after it's done. You want games where the player's decisions actually make a difference, and it affects the outcome of the game. You want the player to have a feeling of accomplishment when the game's done, even if they didn't win. While games like Flux are great for breaking the ice and great for social situations, I just find they're not the kind of game that really gets someone invested and then further interested in the hobby. Now something to think about. If you have a new player showing up who's never played a hobby board game before and they sit down 
against a bunch of pros, that can be highly intimidating. Now to mitigate that, consider looking at cooperative or at least team-based games. These games allow the new player's teammates to help and coach them all within rules of the game. Just watch out for quarterbacking. Helping and guidance is great. Actually taking a new player's turn is a good way to scare someone away from the hobby. Now there is one genre of tabletop gaming that I find great for hooking people, particularly people who say, I don't like games. And those are dexterity games. What better way to show someone that not all games are roll and move or about trading properties than throwing down the big yellow hamster roll wheel in front of them? Dexterity games have the added advantage of being easy to teach and not requiring any special knowledge to play. So those are some of the things I look for when picking an introductory game for prospective new gamers. Now I want to wrap this whole thing up with 10 games that have actually worked great for me over the years for hooking new gamers. Number one is King of Tokyo. This is the perfect step up from Yahtzee. Giant monsters and a King of the Hill style battle. Number two is Black Fleet. Merchants and Pirates in the Caribbean. A great looking pick up and deliver game with amazing components and simple card driven movement system. Red 7. This is a great small deck card game that is more deep than it initially looks. I think this one's fantastic for introducing traditional card gamers and pointing out there's life beyond 52 cards and 4 suits. If you want to catch people's attention, set up Takanoko. Bright hexagonal tiles with bright pieces of pink, yellow, and green bamboo. And then the cutest gardener and panda pieces you've ever seen. King Domino is a great gateway due to the fact it just builds on the premise of dominoes. You draft tiles and play them into your own personal fantasy kingdom. Try to match similar terrain to score big points, but watch out for gaps. Shadows Over Camelot is the best example of a cooperative game with a hidden trader I've ever seen. This one is great when you've got a role-playing gamer who's curious about hobby board games. Let them play a Knight of the Round Table. If you want a cooperative game that has some real impact, check out Flashpoint Fire Rescue, where players play firefighters. It's amazing how invested players can get when they're saving a puppy from a burning building. Now, I've already mentioned Hamster Roll Above. This is my go-to dexterity game that I pull out for potential gamers all the time. This has hooked more gamers than any other game on my list, including many people who don't play games. Pitch Car is a unique for me. As it's hooked gamers, I wasn't even trying to hook. Playing a game at a local pub, I've actually had people come up, ask what we're doing, and ask to join in. This one really catches people's attention once you set it up. And finally, Lanterns the Harvest Festival to cap off the list. This is another tile laying game where you have to be careful not to help your opponents too much while trying to collect your own sets of lanterns. I love the interaction in the game, and every round, everyone gets something. So there you have my thoughts on games to hook new gamers or gateway games. For some more in-depth look at this topic, be sure to check out the full episode of Tabletop Bellhop Live here on YouTube or through your favorite podcatcher on Tuesday. If you have a favorite gateway game, let us know in the comments what that game is. Do you have a gaming or game night question you would like us to tackle in a future Ask the Bellhop segment? You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to the website tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Remember that we record a new Tabletop Bellhop Live podcast every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, and we'd love it if you joined us in the lobby, our chat room. The edited version of that live show gets released every Tuesday, and you can find it on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash tabletopbellhop or on your podcatcher under the Tabletop Bellhop Live. If you enjoy the content we're creating, please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com forward slash tabletopbellhop. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Express Check-In. You can always find us across the web and social media as Tabletop Bellhop One Word, or drop by our website at tabletopbellhop.com for more gaming content. Be sure to subscribe to our channel clicking here, or check out our latest video by clicking here. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Good night and game on.